Welcome to Create and Orchestrate. Today, we're going to talk about fear, greed, sex, and enlightenment. <laughs> I'm Marcus Whitney, and this is Create and Orchestrate. These are the four forces. Unless what you're selling is food, clothing, or shelter, something we all need, and even if it's clothing and shelter, or food, let's just say like the basic food, clothing, and shelter, right? We all need those three things, like at a baseline. But once you start getting into uh, the nice to have food, and the nice to have clothing, and the nice to have shelter, I believe there are four forces that drive us to make purchases, right? And two of them are, are sort of maybe on the negative side of the spectrum, and a lot of economists have popularized these two as being the only, only ones. A lot of behavioral econo uh, uh, economists have, have focused on these two. And I think there are another two that you can just look all over the world and see numerous examples of these two you know, driving many, many purchases as well. So the first one is fear. You know, people buy things when they're afraid of something happening to them. Uh, the insurance industry is obviously the, the, the simplest example of that, but there are many, many more. There are many more reasons where when you, when you traverse down the logic as to why somebody made a purchase, it ultimately was because they were afraid of something happening to them or to somebody that they care about, and so they made this purchase to ensure that that thing didn't happen. So fear, fear is a big one. Greed, uh, so, the vast majority of us in some way, shape, or form are greedy about something. And you know, when you think about competition and success, uh, a lot of things that people do to develop themselves uh, are actually rooted in greed. You know, gr greed of attention, you know, uh, I want more of the food that's on the table. Um, just, there's, there's, there's so many uh, manifestations of, of, of greed that you can take advantage of if you're if you're in the business world it is it's not my favorite one to 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 deal with but if you're in the business to business world you are likely selling to people on fear and greed it's just the reality because if you're in business you're constantly looking at that thin line called net net profit and uh you know your fear of going into the red and your greed of wanting to beat all of your competition is what's going to drive a lot of your, your, your business. And so a lot of business to business uh, you know, uh, transactions happen around fear and greed. Okay, so now let's get into two maybe more uh, uplifting topics that I think happen a lot on the kind of consumer uh, kind of purchase decision model. So the first one is sex. You know, sex is not a dirty word. Every, every last one of us got here by sex and uh, it's one of the great joys of you know, life, and it drives so, 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 so much. And you, you know, you see this obviously in music, in media, in fashion, um, but it's also in food. It's also in in travel and hospitality, right? Um, it's 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 in so many of the things that 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 we enjoy are ultimately at an underlying layer are are driven by by sex. And so, if you're creating a consumer product in some way, shape, or form, um, you should think about that. I guarantee you Apple th thought about that when they made the iPhone, because the iPhone is damn sexy, you know, and it was so much sexier than, uh, you know, so many other cell phones at the time. You know, it, it, it's a status symbol, but it's also pretty attractive. Um, and so I think it's part of the mystique and part of the energy of, of consumer products to, to make sure that sex is something you're thinking about. And then the final one is enlightenment, which is kind of my catch-all bucket for um, all things that truly uh, tap into our higher selves, right? So uh, this would be ecstasy that's not based on, on sex. So, uh, you know, the enjoyment that, that, a, that a sports fan gets, you know, when they're, when they're at an arena and, and supporting their, their, their team or their club. Education, uh, you know, religion, self-help, uh, you know, exercise, yoga, all, all of those types of things uh, that truly are, you know, speaking to the best parts of ourselves. You know, the, the nonprofit industry, uh, there, there, there's a massive, massive economy out there around enlightenment. And I, I wanted to make sure that I talked about that because, uh, you know, 
if you only talk about fear and greed, you sort of put business in this box of really kind of negative motivations. Uh, and that's just not true, right? Uh, a massive part of our economy is driven by positive motivations uh, that are uplifting and, and really do a lot for humanity and hopefully for you know, the entire globe. I think that we, we need to think about uh, our product in the scope of those four things. You're, you're probably touching all four of those motivations in one way or another. And if you're not, you need to kind of think about how you would position what you're doing to, to tap into one of those four things uh, because they are very primal instincts and uh, the part of our brain that makes illogical, irrational decisions about buying something uh, is probably tied into one of those, those four things. Anyway, those are the four forces. I just wanted to you know, share that with you and uh, uh, happy product making. One love.